Sharks are a vastly diverse group of species. There's 550 different species of shark. They occupy almost every aquatic bioregion on the planet. And, you know, in this game called Evolution, they've done incredibly well and diversified to such an extent we see this amazing diversity of sharks today. Sharks are everywhere and have been for a very long time. Scientists believe sharks may have first appeared around 455 million years ago. For most of these millions of years, they evolved in relative isolation from humans. But new research suggests, however, that climate change and human industry are degrading shark habitats, leading to an uptick in shark attacks. As humans and sharks converge, how can we prevent mutual harm? Today, we're looking at emerging technologies designed to keep humans safe in the water, the challenges in designing these technologies, and whether they need to exist in the first place. This is damage control. We traveled down to the Bahamas to speak with some experts on shark-human interactions. My name is Dr. Owen O'Shea, and I'm the executive director and principal research scientist for the Center for Ocean Research and Education here in the Bahamas. Well, sharks, uh, most sharks anyway, sit at the top of the food chain. They're regarded as apex predators, and they, they regulate the food chain from the top. They have this uh, top-down control. They're actually uh, enforcing a uh, harmony within very complicated uh, coastal and uh, offshore populations of other sea life. That harmony is increasingly being disrupted by the influence of humans. Shark populations now face man-made dangers such as long-line commercial fishing, finning, habitat destruction, and ecosystem pollution. In the Bahamas, there's a lot of uh, aggressive urbanization, coastal development, cruise ship terminals, dredging, that sort of thing. On the other hand, humans face a growing fear of shark attack. The number of attacks has risen dramatically over the past 50 years. Climate change is heating waters along the equator, pushing aquatic creatures poleward, according to a study by NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. As sharks seek cooler waters, they come into increasing contact with surfers and beachgoers who flock to subtropical coastlines in record numbers. More people in the water means more potential for incident. Having evolved in isolation from humans, sharks don't normally see them as food or pose a threat. But changes in habitat have been shown to provoke changes in behavior. And one bite is often enough to provoke a significant human response. This woman, this unfortunate woman, the victim of the attack, a mother of three, she's in the hospital tonight, critical condition, with a long, tough road ahead of her. Between 2013 and 2018, there was an estimated average of 81 unprovoked shark attacks on humans reported worldwide, some causing fatalities and others not. However, varying reports on the number of those killed by lightning every year range from 2,000, 6,000, or even 24,000 people. No matter how you look at it, sharks are a substantially smaller threat to us than lightning. Everything is completely sensationalized, and the fact that these interactions are so rare, and relative to the amount of sharks that are killed by us every year, it's, it's just ridiculous. Because of this fear, the race is on to develop technologies that will protect watergoers from potential interactions with sharks. But how effective is this technology? The Bahamas may be the best place in the world to do a deep dive into these questions. Home to one of 21 official shark sanctuaries, the Bahamas have been instrumental in the rehabilitation of shark populations. The Bahamas are very sharky. Even before the, the shark sanctuary was put into effect, we had tons of sharks. I'm Stuart Cove, and I own Stuart Cove's Dive Bahamas. We've always had a very healthy population of sharks. It made sense. Let's protect it now while we have it. This is one of the few places in the world where sharks are afforded uh, a blanket protection, and therefore one of the most uh, amazing places to come and see sharks and dive with sharks in the world. It's no wonder then that the Bahamas is the go-to destination for researchers around the world seeking to understand and minimize shark-human interactions. 
one of the shark deterrent that has been found to, to be most likely to affect shark behavior and to reduce um, shark bites is electric field based deterrents. Wearable electric field based shark deterrents, such as shark bands and shark shield, theoretically manipulate the sensitive sensory organs unique to sharks. Shark bands is essentially a magnet that you strap to your wrist or to your ankle. I'm an evolutionary biologist and so I study their evolution and have been studying sharks for about 30 years. When you've got a magnet strapped to your ankle and you move it up and down, it induces a current. Now sharks have got these incredibly sensitive electrical receptors around their snout. They're essentially these tiny pores. Uh, they can detect the, the minutest of bioelectrical signals. And so if you've got it on your ankle and you're kicking up and down, it's going to generate an electrical field, and if the shark's swimming around and is close enough, the sharks will recognize that something's a little bit awry, and they will be deterred and will move away. That's the logic behind it. And what we found is that there wasn't any effect of the shark bands on the behavior of the sharks, and the shark bands didn't reduce the number of baits being taken by the shark either. And that is because that the, the, the effect that the magnets can have on sharks is limited to a very, very close range. And that, again, if you, let's say, have a magnet on, on your ankle, on your wrist, your hand or your foot might be protected, uh, but, but that's about as far as it goes. Since wearable deterrents drop off at short range, researchers have developed other technologies too. Looking at a shark, you wouldn't even think to look for their ears, but a shark's auditory system is one of the most sophisticated aspects of the shark's hunting behavior. There have been some uh, recently published studies that have suggested that, you know, a sudden onset of sound or a, uh, a very loud sound might have some sort of deterrent effect. Now in the water, it travels a lot further, particularly low frequency sound when it's in the water. You know, sharks are known to respond to um, a very low um, sort of frequency up to about 2000 Hertz. I think it peaks at about 100 Hertz where sharks um, are sort of really interested. And those are the, are the ranges where you can manipulate the patterns in that frequency range and see which patterns induce behaviors that would suggest that the animals don't like it and they're averse to it. But can a universal deterrent even exist? Each of these technologies seeks to repel sharks by manipulating their anatomy. But therein lies the challenge. Sharks are incredibly varied. Uh, a white shark is as different from a black tip shark as a human is from a dog. So I think some of these devices can be useful, but just because something works on bull sharks in the Bahamas does not mean that it's going to work on Galapagos sharks in the Humboldt Current, which is much, much colder. People are always trying to find a repellent that works universally on all sharks, and that's a problem. And even if we could find one technology to deter all species of sharks, should we? The problem is that once you say that something works as a shark deterrent, then people become emboldened and they think that they're immune. And then they start taking risks that they should not take. And I've actually seen this myself, when people would be going surfing in places they wouldn't normally and in places where they put themselves at, at higher risk than, than they think they are because they are having a device that they think it works, but they actually don't work. Researchers say that technology in the absence of understanding is risky. I'm a big advocate of informing the public and using tools that better understands the animals. I think it's important to study any animal really. For me personally, it's, it's an honor to learn about creatures that I share this planet with. And I think that we should learn about sharks to understand really that not only are they absolutely critical for ecosystem health and overall health of our oceans, but they really are not the, you know, sort of mindless killing machines that uh, the media certainly tries to, to make them out to be. We take about 60,000 people to interact with the sharks. And the cool thing about it is they might come in frightened, but when they leave, they're excited about sharks and now they're shark ambassadors. So every year we're creating 60,000 people that go out into the world and promote the protection of sharks.
While attack prevention technology may still be in development, the reality is that humans pose a far greater threat to sharks than the other way around. Education is the key to understanding how we can coexist and make for a stronger and more robust ecosystem.